In this example, we're going to take a look at the quadratic equation x squared plus kx minus 12 equals 0, and we would like to determine values for k that will result in this equation having integer solutions. So that means that k needs to be a member of the set, you know, this whole negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on. Okay, so here are our integers. And so they can be negative, they can be zero, they can be positive, they just have to be essentially whole numbers with their opposites. So if this is something you would like to try on your own first, go ahead and pause the video and do so, and then come on back and we'll work a solution together. All right, so looking at this, we see that the leading coefficient is one, which is really nice, because since k is going to be uh, resulting in integer solutions, k itself is going to have to be an integer, which means we can factor this nicely in this form right here. All right, and so what will go here? Well, it's going to be numbers that multiply together to make negative 12 and add to make, well, this value of k. And so, if we're going to multiply to make a negative 12, you know, one of these factors has to be negative and one of them has to be positive. And factors of 12 are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. Okay, so here we have laid down all the basic principles of this problem. So how are we going to go ahead and attack this? Well, if they multiply to make a negative, we decided that 1 is negative and 1 is positive, because that's how we multiply to make a negative. All right, and they add to make, well, it doesn't really matter if it's positive or negative, because k could be positive or k could be negative. We're just saying plus kx. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this 1 and 12 first. And let's just go ahead and put 1 here and 12 here and just see what happens. So when I multiply this out, I'm going to uh, end up with x squared uh, plus 11x minus 12 equals 0. So in this case, my solutions, well, based on this factorization, will be x equals 1 and negative 12, which are integer solutions, and my value of k will be positive 11. All right, well, what if I had switched these up, and what if I had said x plus 1 and x minus 12 equals 0, essentially just changing the signs? Well, my solutions are negative 1 and 12, again, integer solutions, and when I multiply it out, x squared minus 11x minus 12 equals 0. And so here we see our value of k is negative 11. So integer solutions, positive 11. Integer solutions, negative 11. All right, so it seems like k can equal plus or minus 11, just for starters. And that's when we consider the factor pair 1 and 12. Well, using 1 and 12, where did this 11 come from? Well, because 11 is the difference between these two factors. 12 minus 1 is 11. Well, I wonder if that will follow with my 2 and 6 and my 3 and 4. And so let's go ahead and look at those. So x minus 2 and x plus 6. This uh, will give me positive 2 and negative 6 for solutions, which are integer solutions. And when I multiply it out, it's going to be x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. So that value of k is 4. Once again, 4 is the difference here. And so if we were to switch these up, we would end up with k equals negative 4 as well. So we can go ahead and kind of follow that approach. And so based on the factors 1 and 12, we get k equals plus or minus 11. From the factor pair 2 and 6, we'll get k is plus or minus 4. And then from the factor pair 3 and 4, we'll get k equals plus or minus 1, because uh, 4 minus 3 is 1. So I know that these are all the possible values of k, because these factor pairs are all the possible factor pairs for 12 using whole numbers that will result in integer solutions. And so to answer this question, what values of k will give me integer solutions when I solve this for x? Well, I'll have six values of k. k equals plus or minus 11, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 1.